to help right some wrongs that I believe have been done regarding the way our culture views Christianity. Many people have been hurt or wounded by lies, uh, some intentional and some unintentional, that we've told from our pulpits and publishing houses. So for the sake of the confused, the disaffected, and the misdirected, on behalf of all, uh, those of us Christians that are often overambitious and undereducated, I want to apologize. Listen, I'm sorry if any preacher has ever led you to believe that walking your faith out in a real world would be easy. I'm sorry if we ever led you to believe that the authority of our ministry began at the pulpit and not in the prayer closet. I'm sorry if we've ever given you the idea that you could live for the glory of God on your own terms, or that salvation could be had cheaply or casually. No, the cost is great, but the reward, the reward is even greater. So I apologize that, that we've too often misused the grace of our God as an excuse to ignore Him instead of the power to honor Him. I want to see it fixed today, once and for all. In our genuine desire to see the lost saved, we've cheapened the issue of salvation. We've made easy what we were trying to make simple. Now salvation is simple, but it's not easy. And I'm truly sorry if you've gotten any other message from our Christian community. It's not about having your best life now. It's not about gaining health, wealth, and prosperity. It's about being saved from His wrath for His glory. It's about the blood that was shed on the cross as the payment for your sin and the grace that it's made available to you to be transformed from the inside out into the likeness of the perfect, glorious Son of the living God. Now I'm sorry that you thought you could get away with holding your sin in one hand and your Savior in the other. I'm sorry if you were ever told that all you had to do was repeat after me, just say this prayer, or sign your name on the dotted line. Brother, there's no magic word for salvation. In fact, the only appropriate response to the call of Christ is an unconditional yes. And you don't just say it with your mouth, you shout it with your life. I'm sorry if you believed that you might be able to follow him without being insulted, misunderstood, and rejected. I'm sorry if there was ever a preacher that painted such an insignificant picture of Yeshua as to let you believe that you could continue living the same life after meeting him that you did before. Now he's worthy of so much more. Listen, if we increase the value of Christ, we don't have to decrease the cost of discipleship. And I'm sorry for those who have taught you that you wouldn't have to give anything to have him. That's simply not true. Come and see him as he is. He is so wonderful, so glorious, so beautiful, and so lovely that though he demands it all from us, what we get in return will far outweigh any sacrifice we have to make to give. What we get in return is him. And friend, you'll lose it all to have him. But I believe I came here today to tell you that he is so worth it. He's worth the suffering. He's worth the rejection. He's worth the discipline. He's worth the sacrifice. Because he's that perfect. He's that precious. He's that 